Okay, I've got the camera rather precariously balancing in that branch. I didn't bring the tripod along. But I was out playing with these snowshoes. Now, these are the ones I picked up at a thrift store a while back. Yeah, probably over a year ago. And the difference, you know, they've got a a different sort of a binding than my other, you know, my other ones have got regular leather bindings, which are fine, but they do loosen up and you'll have problems sometimes with them uh, when it starts melting a little bit. The leather will get soaked up and stretch or freeze and then you can't get the buckles loose. Well, these have got, see if I can get on the camera, bindings made out of old inner tubes. It's doubled right where your foot goes. Then you slide your foot through, and then this goes up over your heel. Now, I've never used this type before, and I thought, well, maybe they'd move around too much, but no, they work pretty good. Actually, kind of impressed with them, but where I first heard of these, of making this type of bindings, was in uh, one of the Calvin Rutstrom's books. And the idea behind these was, if you're going like on thin ice or you know crossing a river or lake or a place where you could break through, if you break through with snowshoes that are that are strapped on tight with the buckle system, you're pretty screwed. Well, the idea with these, you can slip them off much like you would do with a regular rubber, you know, because it just slides over your heel. So you could actually kick them loose. It's not a bad invention. You know, I was concerned that maybe this rubber would rip or maybe not stretch enough to get my feet in, but they actually work pretty good. But I think it would take a little experimenting to figure out the right size of holes to cut or, you know, but not a bad idea. You know, because like I said, even uh, snowshoeing on trails sometimes, though, you end up building up a trail and you could fall off the trail and then you're upside down and your snowshoes are in the air and then you got to try to get them off to get up again. Well, these you could just kick off. So, you know, not a bad invention. I, I'm kind of impressed with them. At least uh, to the point where I won't go and switch these out for the leather bindings, because the leather, uh, like I say, can be problematic. I usually have to carry something spare along because you can easily break a strap on those. Or, like I say, you fight with the buckles. This is a pretty simple design. So I'll bring it in close. I don't dare move the camera. But you can see it's just a cutout for your toe, and then this that pulls up over your heel. And I can see where, like I say, it's double and then glued together, and then last on with rawhide to make the pivot. Not bad. These aren't bad snowshoes, they're uh, not really big. What are they, 58 inch, 10 by 58? But they work pretty good, don't weigh a lot. Not bad at all. And I, I don't remember what I paid for my I found them in a thrift store. Like I said, I already got a, another set that's similar to these, but is bigger. But these are good to have. It's the only way to get around. You know, otherwise you're up to your knees and snow. Well, the camera's still hanging in the tree. She's a, she's a hell of a mount I got going. 